Hello and welcome to this edition of News Click. With me here is the person who is, in a sense, one of the moving forces behind News Click, Prabir Purukhaista, who also happens to be an important person in the Delhi Science Forum. And in this edition of the program, we are going to discuss the Controller and Auditor General of India's report on the Krishna Godavari gas basin and the manner in which the government of India, that is the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, has unduly favoured a few companies, the largest of whom happen to be Reliance Industries Limited, the country's largest, biggest and perhaps most influential corporate conglomerate in the private sector. Prabir, thank you so much for coming here. You've been writing about the report of the Controller and Auditor General of India. If you can kindly highlight how the CAG has pointed out that in the case of Reliance Industries Limited and the exploration contract and the production sharing contract they have with the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, Reliance Industries, just in one month's time, was allowed to increase its capital expenditure almost four times to increase its output by a hundred percent. So output was slated to double. Capital expenditure went up by almost four, four times, almost 400 percent. But what actually happened was though the capital expenditure went up, production not only did not double, but came down substantially. How do you explain what is often euphemistically called gold plating of contracts? Well, you know, this is of course one of the major issues on the CAG report. And this has also been focused much earlier because this is really, this issue had been explored, had come out much earlier when Director General of Hydrocarbons had accepted this inflated capital cost or what we are what we would call as inflated capital ca cost. It was done in a matter of 55 days. So the CAG report says by September sometime this was submitted, the revised costs were submitted and this was again passed by December. So really a matter of 55 days this increase was accepted. It's almost impossible, humanly impossible to evaluate such huge contracts in the period in which the Director General of Hydrocarbons did it. So obviously, as people have argued, there is, there is a lot of problems with the way it was done. What CAG has brought out, and these are the things which are really new, that these were done on the basis of single party financial bids. That quite often what would happen is five or six parties would be asked to bid, would be pre-qualified and then finally they would all be disqualified except one party and a single party financial bid would then be closed. Now the Control and Auditor General's report has over a dozen such examples but one of the biggest such examples was AKER, Acre Floating Production, which is part of the Acre Group. They got a 10 year lease on a floating production and storage and offloading vessel and this contract of over a billion US dollars, 1.1 billion dollars, was given to this contract without even looking at competing bids. The other bidders were completely disqualified and only Acre's financial bid was open. I mean, this kind of uh, manipulation of contracts which goes against the basic principles of competition, fairness and transparency, does it not? That, of course, if it is only a private issue between Reliance and Acre, we did not be concerned about it. But unfortunately, what happens when the capital cost increases, then as per the production sharing contract, that has to first come out of the top, number one. And number two, the profit petroleum ratio also changes in favor of the private party. So even if we accept that Reliance did not benefit directly, from the extra money which Acre got by virtue of, as you were saying, gold plating, even then its share of profits would have gone up. So, okay. so it's two issues are So essentially involved. it is the manner in which what is called the IM or the investment multiple is structured into that production sharing contract. And one would say that if production goes up further, one would logically assume that thanks to scales of production, 
your investment should come down. But in this case, the reverse has happened. And what is clearly evident is that the government of India becomes a loser. So there is something inherently, there was something inherently faulty about the manner in which this production sharing contract was worked out and the way in which these investment multiples figured out. And, and, and that's clearly something that the Controller and Auditor General of India's report points out. Again, there are a set of issues that come out with it because the award of the contract depends on what you've committed in your bid. And that's how Reliance got the contract. They had made attractive profit sharing proposals. All of it gets subverted by the fact of increasing of the capital cost and therefore the investment multiple changes. And it changes in a way the government loses its share. In fact, that's what the essential point that CAG has made. That in the way this has been handled, the way this contract was handled, the government has lost its profit share considerably. And therefore the CAG comes in to review whether this contracts have been done properly or not because Reliance raised the issue. These are private arrangements. We are buying stuff. How can you audit all this? But probably, you know, as you rightly pointed out, it's not just a matter between private parties. The, the government of India is supposed to be the custodian of resources that are supposed to belong to the people of this country. In this case, natural gas found under the sea uh, in the Krishna, Krishna Godavari base, uh, Basin in the Bay of Bengal. Now here you have a situation where the original cost estimates go up from 2.4 billion to 8.4 billion and then the company says that the gas flow will go up from 40 MMSCMD, that's million metric standard cubic meters a day, it would double from 40 MMSCMD to 80 but actually it comes down. It do doesn't reach. It uh, that doesn't reach that figure at all. And in fact, current reports indicate that it's way, way, way below the 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 what what had been predicted. So clearly, you deliberately inflate the target. You gold plate the investment. You rob the exchequer. So do you blame Reliance, or was it the government which structured this? production sharing contract because Reliance's argument is this is a highly risky business this is the deepest uh, anywhere in the world such deep drilling doesn't happen the cost of hiring rigs has gone up all these reasons are being forwarded by the spokespersons of RIL. Let's, let's take the one by one you know of course the question is that government did have the mechanism of what's called the management committee in which the government was the chair and also at 50% uh, share on the board. The two, five, four people, two of them were government's nominees. So government was supposed to supervise also all such large value contracts, which of course it didn't do. So that's one part of it. The second part of it, when you come to what Reliance is saying, let's look at the, let's go back to that 1.1 billion dollar uh, FPS or the floating uh, production uh, vessel, storage vessel that we talked about. It's an interesting issue and CAG has done its homework on this. The cost of that vessel was 26 billion. It was a converted tanker. Conversion cost of two such vessels by Jurong Shipyard, shipyards in Singapore was given by Jurong Shipyard in a press release as 88 million. So if we take even outside figures, the cost would be something like 100, 150 million for this FPSO, which was finally given as a bare boat lease for 10 years for 1.1 billion. You know, the management committee of the government are obviously connived completely. The government's parties or nominees connived completely. The director general of hydrocarbon completely failed his regulatory oversight. Okay. And the no, no, was fully no. All right. Now, on this issue of the uh, regulatory, the regulator, the DGAs, the director general of hydrocarbons, the ch first charge sheet against Mr. V.K. Sibyl, who, who used to head the DGH at that point of time, has nothing to do with the Krishna Godavari gas. It pertains to alleged favoritism shown in a completely different matter. Now, there's a huge amount of evidence which indicates uh, how Mr. Sibyl allegedly got a lot of favors from RIL. Do you think that the time is now opportune that the CBI should name Reliance Industries Limited as one of the parties that allegedly bribed Mr. Sibyl and that's why all the paperwork was done as you say super fast? I think there is absolutely no question that Mr. Sibyl should be proceeded against and obviously the beneficiary is Reliance and if the beneficiary is Reliance then it should also be proceeded against.
But you know, coming back to the production sharing contract, there's one element of the CAG report which hasn't received as much public notice. You're talking about the whole issue about vacation of acreage? Vacation of acreage. You know, I, I really wanted to ask you about that. And, and you could even argue that this is a land grab of a different kind, except it's not land, it's acreage under the, under the, under the ocean bed. Under the sea and then basically sitting or hoarding future hydrocarbon reserves which you are supposed to have brought on stream by a certain date on which you have to vacate. All right. You know, the facts, uh, as has been highlighted in the Controller and Auditor General's report, is that there was 7,645 square kilometers of the exploration area. Now, and, you know, as per the terms of the contract, up till, say, 2009, if you, you continue to explore, and then if you do not, you know, get the reserves of, or are not able to strike your gas, you're supposed to vacate 25% of the exploration area in the first phase, then 50% in the second phase, and finally, another, you know, almost 100%, you just keep 5%. But what we actually said, that instead of keeping 5%, RIL continued to keep 100% and continued to work that entire 7,645 square this kilometers. This is the issue, really. And I think this is a very important issue, which is difficult to quantify the benefits that Reliance may or may not get out of it. The essential issue is that as you progressively explore the area, you put in money, you're allowed to keep a certain amount. You're allowed to keep that amount which you have explored and struck gas. If you have not struck gas or you have not drilled wells, you're supposed to release that area. As you said, there is a phase-wise release. And at the last phase, which expired in 2009, you are supposed to release all areas where you have not made commercial discoveries or you have not developed or gas All state, but 5%. Which in this case would be tantamount to 5%. If you see the map that CAG has given, it shows that probably only about one third of the area max that Reliance has even sunk wells. In the other area, nothing has been done. So there is absolutely no basis why DGH, Director General of Hydrocarbon DGH, should have allowed them to keep 25, 75% and 50% which they are supposed to have kept, rest they are supposed to have released in the first two phases itself. After 2009, all other areas except the 5% should have been kept. DGH and Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas finally connived with Reliance to allow them to keep entire 100% in complete violation of the production sharing contract. More important, these areas, if they had been released to other parties, we might, might have had strikes there and we could have alternate sources of gas coming up because the entire logic of the NELP, the new exploration policy, is that it brings hydrocarbon to stream much faster, which public funds may not be able to do. So, so in a that. sense, what this episode has highlighted, it's undermined the very basis of that new exploration licensing policy. Absolutely. Okay, Prabir, I have two quick questions for you before we conclude this interview. The draft report of the Controller and Auditor General was leaked to the media. And it was widely publicized, various newspapers, television channels, websites, including NewsClick, had published detailed extracts from the draft report of the CAG. How much of a difference is there between the draft report and the final report? Has it truly been diluted? Has a lot of the, the I should say, harsh criticism of the manner in which the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas favoured Reliance Industries Limited, has the language been toned down substantially? Uh, because the CAG has been criticised for commenting on policy issues, which is not supposed to be part of its domain. So th that's the question I have to. Has the report really been diluted? I think it's very clear the language has been softened, but the content has not been diluted. So CAG has stuck to all the substantive points made. I did not see, comparing the two reports, I did not see that they have really taken back any of the points they had made in substantive terms. So, so, so in, in other been, words, what you're saying is just the tone and the tenor. The tone has been diluted. On the question of policy, it has been very clear that it is commenting on the policy in so far as government's share of profits or government share of revenue has decreased. And it has said it shows that the original policy perhaps needs to have a relook because it's very difficult to keep the production sharing contract without really doing 
continuous invest, you know, analysis of the investment, the expenditure and so on, the government might be better off with a simpler uh, exploration policy in which the production sharing is really a lump sum royalty on the total amount of gas that is produced. So that is what you are suggesting, a change in the manner in which these contracts are lined up, greater transparency also in way these contracts are not only signed, uh, the way in which these are awarded. My last question to you. Was the apparently sudden decision on the part of the then former Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas, the Union Minister, Mr. Murli Deora, to decide to quit his position and devote all his time for the party, the Indian National Congress, uh, ostensibly because he was also getting by in years. Do you think that this was some sort of a move to preempt the criticism that would be leveled against him because after all he was the minister when all this was happening or all these uh, contracts uh, all these um, uh, the alleged favoritism was taking place you know Murli Deora's proximity to the Mani group is quite public. I mean, I don't think there is really... It's any, hardly a secret. It's, it's not really the best kept secret in the country. Now, the question is, it's also on record in the CAG report that the minister did show an interest in what was being done. And in, if we really dig deep into the files, perhaps we'll find dotings in the files which have not come out in the CG report, which should show that the minister was favorably inclined to the Reliance uh, case. Having said that, I don't think leaving his chair would be reason enough to stop the heat on him because Maran has left his chair on telecom. But the heat is still, still on him. Still the heat is still on him. That's, so that's of course another of, story. Yeah, this kind of things really don't die down that easily. We are talking of mammoth scams. These are so what, 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 would you explain, what would we expect the Public Accounts Committee, which is supposed to you know, then recommend to the government what action it needs to take on the basis of the Controller and Auditor General's report? What do you expect the PSC to do? I think the PSC should talk about how cases should be filed against the corrupt officials and exa really examination of the culpability of the minister and the senior officials in the Petroleum and Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. Well, time alone will tell, Prabir, whether that happens or not and whether action will be taken to break this nexus between business and politics. Thank you so much for explaining the issues behind, behind the controversy surrounding the manner in which gas in the Krishna Godavari Basin is being exploited by Reliance Industries Limited. Thank you once again.